So let us continue the discussion on wind energy. We have seen the brief history in the previous session and what wind energy is. Now let us see what are the different factors affecting the distribution of wind energy on the surface of the earth. So on the planetary level, the great mountain masses influence the circulation of air currents. It will stop or allow through the passes movement of air. Then the surface roughness of friction. The first factor is drain mountain masses. Then second factor is the surface roughness of friction owing to the resistance that different elements of the air surface offer to the air circulation affects the nature of wind. The tall trees and rocks or the stones, vegetations, all these things will pose a hindrance to the movement of air circulation. Then hills, trees, buildings and similar obstructions in their streamline airflow. So the air may have to flow in a zigzag manner. The streamline flow of air will be affected. So unique wind speed of very quiet quantity very uh, large value of wind speed you can get near the seashore but there is no hindrance then obviously the downdraft climatic disturbances from thunder clouds and precipitation all these things will affect the local winds So this diagram will show you the variation of wind speed with height when you go up from the surface of the earth, how the wind velocity is affected in different conditions. So in the y-axis you can see the meters on x-axis you can see different hindrances. On a plane surface you can get 10, say 10 meter per second of velocity. There is no hindrance, right? There is no building, no vegetation, no trees, no hill, right? So in such conditions, you can get 10 meter per second of speed even at a lower level of 250 to 300 meters. When there are vegetation, small buildings, etc., if you want to get 10 meter per second of wind speed, you may have to go up to 400 meters. When there are large buildings, industries and apartments, etc., if you want to get 10 meter per second, you may have to go above 500 meters. As we have seen in the previous session, most of the kinetic energy of the air is settled at a lower level of 1000 meters of the atmosphere, lower, lower atmosphere. So these are the major benefits of wind energy, pollution free, there are no emissions from the wind turbine systems even, right? No fuel is required to run it, just the kinetic energy of the air is sufficient, distributed power is obtained. Then you can install the wind turbine units, windmills in the remote locations. So obviously no population or vegetation are affected. You can cultivate many things on the bottom of the wind turbine units, right? Now how to convert this available energy in the wind or air? The most important factor to be considered in the wind energy conversion is the design of the blades. That is primarily responsible for converting the kinetic energy into mechanical energy. How are you designing the blades of the wind turbine? The rate of change of angular momentum of air at inlet and outlet of a blade. The rate of change of angular momentum of air. You know what angular momentum is, right? So the rate of change of that angular momentum of the air entering to the blade. So air is moving on the path of movement. You are placing a wind turbine unit having three blades. Okay. 
so there is an entry point for air at the blade and exit point right it will pass through the blade so when it is moving over the blade it will uh, impart a moment to the blade isn't it and that momentum given to the blade will move the blade allow the moment uh, blade to rotate so at inlet and outlet how much this angular momentum is changing with respect to time that gives rise to the mechanical torque on the rotor as air flows over the aerofoil section of the blade we will see the blade design in detail in the coming sessions it induces a differential pressure, pressure distribution so there will be a pressure difference across the top and bottom surface of the blade so that pressure difference will be maintaining the movement of the blade so this is a fundamental equation of wind power it depends on the amount of air speed of air and mass of air how much volume of the air is falling on the surface of the blade at what velocity is coming and how much density air is having mass by volume is density right so kinetic energy you know that it is half mb square right mass of air and velocity of air power is kinetic energy per unit time so here m dot mass flowing per unit time it is the mass flux dm by dt m dot is dm by dt mass of air flowing per second so mass flow rate as per fluid mechanics we have studied in third semester it is rho into a into v density into area over which it is flowing into velocity so therefore the power which is kinetic energy per unit mass is given as half into rho a v cube mass flow rate m dot is substituted with rho a v so you will get power is equal to half rho a v cube so power is proportional to cube of velocity air directly proportional to air density and directly proportional to area rotor swept area so how much efficiently you can extract wind power is governed or limited by bet's limit okay we'll see what bet's limit is we'll derive an expression for that later the power coefficient now you just understand the power coefficient is the ratio of power extracted by the turbine to the total contained power in the wind resource that is a power coefficient how much power is extracted from the total available power in the wind pt by pw pt is the power extracted by the turbine t stands for turbine and pw is the available power in the wind w stands for wind okay so turbine power output is half rho av cube into cp so cp is pt by pw half rho av cube is the pw and pt is the total available I mean total uh, converted power at the turbine so pt is the converted power or the energy available at the turbine half rho a v is cube is the energy available in the wind so bet's limit is the maximal possible is 16 by 27 or 59 percentage efficiency is the best a conventional wind turbine can do in extracting power from the wind okay so this is a moment when the wind is flowing from a velocity v1 to v2 so this change in velocity from v1 to v2 will be converted to the moment of this blades and later to electricity as you have seen the wind power is proportional to cube of velocity so 
the wind speed when wind speed is increasing from 0 to 120 km per hour in the x-axis you can see the wind speed on the y-axis you can see the power density in watts per meter square so how the power density is affected with the wind speed so these are the major factors as you have seen in the previous slides to summarize So as the velocity doubles, power is increased by k times, right? So for the same power output, the rotor area could be reduced. At a location where the high wind velocity is there, you can considerably reduce the size of the wind turbine for getting a similar power output in a area where wind velocity is very less. So the selection of site is very critical for the success of a wind power farm, windmill farm. So this is a summary of today's session. Power coefficient we have defined and how, what are the factors affecting the wind conversion. So today we you are requested to note down the wind energy conversion and beds limit and find out how to derive arrive at the beds limit write down in your notebook and email to me so that is the activity for today so don't forget write down the major parameters affecting the wind energy conversion derivation for wind energy developed and beds limit okay